Hey guys, I I hope everything is going well for you today, and um, today's sermon is going to be called Just You. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and give you praise, oh God. You were just awesome in every way, Father. Um... Today, Lord Jesus, speak to me, speak through me, and just let your presence just sit in this moment with us, especially today. Uh, Jesus, with all this, with all the stuff that can define us, God, I, I pray that you just speak something new and fresh with us today. Amen. Hey guys, um, I watched the Celine Dion documentary on Amazon Prime. And for those of you who are a member of Amazon Prime, um, it is a really good thing to be a member of. Not only do you get a free Amazon uh, delivery, you still have to pay for whatever item you order, but you get free delivery, and you also get Amazon Music, Amazon Prime Movies, and you get um, KU, which is Kindle Unlimited, so you get uh, tons of books. That you could read on your on your Kindle, uh, absolutely free. So it's a good deal. Um, and no, Amazon didn't pay me to say that. But when it's something I like, I just advertise it because I think it's a good deal. Uh, so anyway, I was watching this. Um, the documentary that several people watched called I Am Celine Dion. And it is phenomenal. And uh, phenomenal as it is, it is well put together. The story flows well. They had great video clips of her growing up with her and her children with her, um, obsession with shoes, um, you know, it showed the lighter side of Celine Dion, but it also showed what she's been going through for the last 17 years, particularly the last scene, it's heartbreaking to watch, um, her struggle with stiff person syndrome or SPS um, it's a neurological disease which um, causes spasms and sometimes there are little spasms sometimes it's a whole thing, thing which the doctor would the do- the doctors were calling the crisis, which means your body te- your body spasms um spasms so much that you can't breathe and and it is it can last anywhere from five minutes to a couple of hours and. On the last scene of this video, um, you see up close and personal um, what happens when she goes into full-on crisis. Um, It was on the day she sang Love Again, for those of you who have 
seen that movie, she sang the song called Love Again. And after she ended up the second day, uh, after she sang that song, um, she was really excited because it was the first time she had sung in quite a while. So she was with her therapist and her foot began to spasm like, began to tense up and not relax. And the doctors and the therapist asked her, is this your first spasm of the day? And she said, yes. Um, He asked her a few other questions. And before you know it, her body just went really rigid and she was laying down on her back and her the spasm just went all the way through her body and she began to have a seizure now I've um I don't have sip person syndrome but I do have cerebral palsy and sometimes with cerebral palsy, you spasm. And I also had seizures before. Not to the extent uh, that she's had seizures or not to the extent that some people with CP ha- have, thank God. But I, I know for myself, uh, when when I have a seizure, it's it's just you you can't really do anything. It's like you stand there and you you lie down and you know that something's happening, but you can't control it in your brain and you just shake and shake and shake until it's over and you just have to wait until it's over. And I've had uh, um, panic attacks too, where you f- where you feel like you can't breathe and and breathing is hard, and all you have to do is wait until it's over. It was what I've gone through times a thousand. Um, you saw her having a seizure and not, not only having a seizure, but being so rigid that you, that she couldn't, uh, she couldn't move or do anything. And they tried to give her some medication to her nose but the medication to her nose wasn't working at that point. And it was just something to watch. And and I was like thinking, oh, I was just so, it was triggering watching that last scene. And, uh, and she said, but, and throughout the whole thing, she was like, I miss the people. I miss the people. I miss doing this. I have to sing again for the people. And I thought, first, I was of the mind of, this is this is a wonderful woman. I'd love to meet her. I'd love to uh, produce a song and work with her because she, she seems like such a wonderful, warm person. Uh, when her when her staff came into the room and when the nurse and therapist came into the room, she was so respectful and so just gentle and all that stuff. I was like, I would love to work with her and um, write and produce music for her. 
Um, and that um, there was part of me that says, you really love your fans and that's a good thing. But there was another part of me, which is what this sermon is going to be about, um, that, that wanted to put my arms around her and say, honey, the vocal acrobatics and the wonderful voice you have, um, it's wonderful. It's what you're known for, whatever. But, but I wanted to say, your fans love you. You as a person. You as a human being. Your kids love you as a mom. Your friends love you as a friend. Uh, your brothers and sisters love you as a family member. You know, I wanted to say, yes, we love the voice. Yes, we love what you do on stage. We we all love that. But more importantly than that, we love you. If you couldn't sing a note forever, we'd still love you. We love you for the person you are. We love you for what you bring to the world. Your, your kids love you for the mom you are. Like, I just wanted to say, your friends appreciate you and your voice. We love your voice. But at the end of it all, we love you. And this brought me to, to how in the world today, we people sometimes define themselves about what they do and whatever. And I, by what they do, I just want to say that that at the take away whatever you do, whether it's teaching or whether it's a businessman, whether it's a singer, whatever, take away what you do. You are special not because of what you do. You are special, people of God, because of who you are because of who you are, all those material things, all those things that you've been gifted with, that's a plus. But the gem of being human is just being human. And um, it's just being human and celebrating the fact that you are here, you survived, you you thrived, you're raising kids, you're doing what you do, and just celebrating that fact. You know, it took me a long time to get to this uh, place myself because I'm like, oh, I don't have a career, I'm not married, I'm not doing this or whatever. And the Lord had to wake me up one day and say, that's not why I created you. I created you because of who you are. You don't have to have a fancy job or whatever to, to be significant. Your significance doesn't lie in what you do. You have your significance. Um, lies in the fact you exist. You exist. And the world is screwed up so much that we tend to define ourselves by what we have, by, by who we're with, by who we hang out with. Oh, we need to get with this person because they can get me in there or whatever. And if the Lord opens doors for you, that's great. But you are not, it shouldn't, it shouldn't define your, your humanness. And that is very hard to say. But you are significant because you are human. 
And the reason why I'm calling this sermon just you is it's just you. You are significant because you're you. Not because of what you do. Not because of what you have. Not because you're um, um, a janitor. Not because you're a celebrity. Not because you know all those people. It's because you're you. That's your significance. And people that think that because they have money, that that makes them more significant. No, it doesn't. It just means you can live more comfortably. You don't have to worry about where the rent is coming from. But on a human level, it doesn't make you more significant. When you when you pass when you pass from time into eternity, do you think that it's gonna get you more points because you were Tina Turner that died of cancer and not the janitor down the street? Like, dead is dead, but it's what you do in your life that counts. And the fact that you're human, the fact that God, the infinite, wonderful Father that we serve, saw it fit for your parents to come together and to weave you together as an embryo and to bring you into the world, that's your significance. Your significance is not in anything you have. It's in who you are. And it's in the fact that you exist. The fact that you ex- exist is a wonderful, beautiful thing. And I think when you start with that, if all the, the accomplishments and everything about gifts is taken away, if you couldn't do what you do, you are still you. And God loves just you. God loves just you. And not that he doesn't want you to have things or whatever, a a life and achieve purpose and all that and just bring joy and laughter to people. But your significance should, should not start there. Your significance should be and is to God is in the fact that you you are you are and you know you know it's often said in church circles um, that I, uh, I I love I love I love um, I love him because he first loved me. But I came to, and I know we we ha, we have a wonderful hymn that we say we love we love God because He first loved me. But I've come to the issue, I've come to the um, conclusion uh, is that I love God just because He is. If he didn't go to the cross, if he didn't die for me, if he didn't do anything for me, I would still love him. If he took me out of here tomorrow, I would still love him. I love my life. I I love what I bring to the world. I love all of that. But if I, and I love the gifts for preaching and the gifts for music and the gifts 
pro pro um, producing and the gift for casting vision of movies and whatever. I love all of those gifts. But if those gifts never come to fruition, I'm still me. Whatever happens in my life, I'm still me. I'm still significant because I'm me, because I exist. And not because of anything I can do, not because of anything I have. All that's great, but that's, but that's gravy on, on a wonderful uh, piece of meat. But the piece of me is the fact that I exist. And whatever comes after that is supposed to add to that. It's not like you come with nothing and then you have to achieve, achieve, achieve to be significant. No, you come with the significance first because he saw fit to create you. And then whatever you achieve after that, whatever degree you get or don't get, how much money you don't, you do or don't have, adds to that, adds to that. All those things are additives, but at the bottom of it, it's who you are. It's that you exist. And it's, it's not because nothing, not I'm significant because. No. Or I love God because. No. I love God because he is. Because he is. Not because of what he did for me. All that is, is gravy. The fact that he went to the cross, the fact that he died for my sins, all that is gravy. The fact that he loves me, that all that is gravy. If he, I'm going to say something really interesting. If he didn't like me, if he thought I was a despicable human being and damned me to hell, I would still love him because he created me. That's the thing that I came to. You don't love a person because of what they give you. You love a person because of not who they are, but the fact that they are. And that's why God can love people, because he doesn't see who you are and what you do. He sees the fact that you are, that you exist, and that's it. Because if we saw people like that, we wouldn't care about um, what they do. We wouldn't offer significance, oh, the haves and have-nots. If we would see um, people... Um, through the lens of the fact that they exist and the fact that they are and treat people with respect, treat people with kindness because of the fact that they are, this would be a different world. This would be a level playing field. But Lord, I pray that we get there, that we see that people are significant and that we that we can, we need to see people through the lens of the fact that they're people, that they need to be loved. It doesn't matter, like, who they are. It doesn't matter if they're the homeless person on the street or, or, um, a, a mentally, um, different person. Or it doesn't matter, like, if they're a million-dollar celebrity. Like, if we, if we can 
figure out that we need to love people because they are, that's it. Um, we, Like I said before, we often say that we love Jesus because he first loved us. But I came to the conclusion that I love Jesus because he is. Because he is. Just because he is God. Because he is God. And I wrote a song um, a few years ago um, about, about that. That just, I love him because he is. Um, um, and, um, and I would say, and I said, the chorus says, I would love you just for being you, ever faithful and ever true. I would love you just because you're who you're who is and is to come. I would love you just because you are God. I would love you just because you're who is and is to come. I would love you just because you are God. Um. So yeah, that's what what I came to. And I think we need to see people and love people from the lens of I love you because you are. That's it. I love you because you exist. And all your behaviors or whatever, that that's something we you you could work on. But before that, I look at the fact that you are and that you are significant because you are. Because it's just you. Just you. The Lord wants just you. Just you. Even if you have a problem with surrendering, wherever you sit, wherever you stand, whoever you are, whatever walk of life you come from, he just wants you because you are you. You. And it's just such a wonderful thing to come to. It's it really is freeing, and it took a lot of work to get to get here because the world will tell you it's what you have, it's you know how much money you have, the social media followers you have, or whatever. Do you think the Lord would would count me less significant? Because there are not millions of people watching me every week. Um, would put me against uh, T.D. Jakes and Stephen Furtick or what, and whoever. And say, no, she's not as significant. Because she doesn't have the followers. She doesn't have the clout. She doesn't have whatever. No, that is all a matter of circumstance. He would look at us three. He would look at me. He would look at Stephen Furtick. He would look at T. D. Jakes, and all, for all three of us to say, "Well done, well done." I am so proud of you for doing what you do. For you know, because he doesn't look at significance the way we do. He look at significance because of um, because of the fact that we are that we are human now now the fact that we are all three preachers doesn't make make us more significant or the fact that they 
pastor in mega churches, and I and I um, preach online every week. That doesn't that makes no difference to God. I'm still preaching the word just as much as they are. And God will look at us the same and say, well done. Well done. I am so proud of you for doing that. And I think if we can, if we can get to the point of having significance be the fact that we exist, the fact that we are, and have everything be an additive on top of that, we would just change the world. And it would just be wonderful. Like we would look we would look at everyone as as a person, as people, as human. We would fight for everyone who need who needs fighting for. Um, we would um, we would just love each other differently if we say, "I love you just because you are." You are significant. You are human. You are to be loved and respected, and you are to be to be cherished because you're human. And because you are God's beautiful creatures. Um, thank you guys for joining me today. I hope this was of encouragement to you. It totally was for me. Thank you so much for being with me and toiling with me these past almost 13 years now. I appreciate you. Bye. If you did it, hey, so stop that. The stars in the sky, put the moon and the sun in place. If you didn't breathe new life into me, and then rise up from the grave, I would love you just for just for being you. Ever faithful and ever true, I would love you just because you're you're who is and is to come. I would love you just because you are God. I would love you just because you're who is and is to come. I would love you just because you are God. If you did, if there were no such thing as the old rugged cross, and you didn't come to save, if you didn't spend three days being dead, and then rise up from the grave. I would love you just for being you, no matter what you do. I would love you just because you're, you're who is and is to come. I would love you just because you are God. I would love you just because you're who is and is to come. I would love you just because you are God. I would love you. 
just for me and you. Ever faithful and ever true. I would love you just because you're who is and is to come. I would love you just because you are God. I would love you just because you're who is and is to come. I would love you just because you are God. See, see you guys next week. Bye. I acknowledge you as Father. I acknowledge you as Son. I acknowledge you, Holy Spirit, the only the one lover of my soul, bright and morning star, and the prince of peace, that is who you are. But above all that, there is this one fact, you are Jesus Christ, the Lord, Christ the Lord. Christ the Lord, you are Jesus Christ the Lord. The name we worship and adore, you are Jesus Christ the Lord. I acknowledge you as Father, I acknowledge you as Son. I acknowledge you, Holy Spirit, the only one, lover of my soul, bright and morning star, and the Prince of Peace. That is who you are. But above all that, there is this one fact. You are Jesus Christ, the Lord, Christ the Lord, Christ the Lord. You are Jesus Christ the Lord, the name we worship and adore. You are Jesus. Jesus Christ, the Lord. I wrote that song too a few few years ago. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.